Hi, it's Adam here from adaminsights.com and in this video we're going to be pitching the 2022 MacBook Air with the M2 processor against the Mac Studio with the M1 Ultra processor using Cinebench and we're going to see which one comes out on top. If you haven't already seen it, have a look at my video where I'm pitching the M2 MacBook Air against a Intel i9 MacBook Pro. Uh, it's a really interesting result. I've put a link below in the description. But I guess onto these machines. So I bought both of these uh, computers together at the same time and I've been really impressed by both of them but I've probably been more so impressed by the M2 MacBook Air because it's so lightweight. The screen is absolutely fantastic uh, for working on and even if uh, I'm doing a lot of work with it plugged into an external uh, display in the office, it's blazingly fast for editing 4K video and uh, for general office and web stuff and for photos, graphic design and a little bit of 3D, I've been really impressed by the M2 MacBook Air. I've been really happy with it. So much so, I've probably been using it for a lot more um, demanding tasks that I actually originally bought the M1 Ultra for as well. So it's kind of yeah, I, owning the M2 MacBook Air, I actually kind of haven't used the M1 Ultra Mac Studio as much as I thought that I would. But uh, it's now time just to put them head to head with Cinebench. So the M2 MacBook Air is an 8 core M2 CPU with the 10 core GPU and it's got 24 gigs of RAM. The M1 Ultra Mac Studio. Uh, has well, it's obviously it's the M1 Ultra with uh, 20 cores and it has 64 gig of RAM in it. So this is the upper end uh, um, Mac Studio model that you can buy. Obviously, this machine uh, just alone cost just over six thousand dollars. Then I had to add the external hard drive to it, and then the displays, everything else. This machine completely maxed out uh, with the best that you could get was about $3,800, $3,900 uh, in Australia. But I guess without further ado, we've got Cinebench loaded up on both of these machines. Let's just click on the multi-core benchmark at exactly the same time and let's see what the results are. So obviously the M1 initially seems to be steaming ahead as to be expected. But the M2 is still doing a really good job of uh, keeping up. And spoiler alert, if you haven't already watched uh, the video with me pitching this machine against the Intel i9 MacBook Pro from 2019, this absolutely blitzes the Intel i9. Okay, so it seems that the M1 Mac Studio with the Cinebench benchmark does a lot better than the M2 MacBook Air. I guess that's to be expected, but we've still got a very respectable result coming from the M2 MacBook Air. Well, there we have it. Obviously, the M1 Mac Studio performs a lot faster than the M2 MacBook Air. But I guess, why did I actually even bother running this test? I mean, wasn't it really going to be blatantly obvious that the M1 Studio was going to outperform the MacBook Air? Well, yeah. But the thing is, is that the M2 MacBook Air it's just such a usable computer and it just performs so well and because it actually does a lot better than my older 2019 Intel i9 MacBook Pro it's kind of a computer that for my use which is fairly demanding graphic design stuff a lot of web work, uh, 3D, 4K video editing uh, photo editing with Lightroom and uh, compressing uh, RAWs obviously to TIFFs it, the M2 kind of actually ticks most of the boxes and even though the M1 
Ultra is a lot faster, I'm not even sure I really need it because I've got the M2 MacBook Air.